The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Those are some words. The truth will make us free. Being a disciple of Jesus will make us free. Continuing in Jesus' word will make us free. That's great news, right? We are made free. Okay, sometimes I feel like you. I often feel like those Jews that Jesus was talking to at that point when they ask him, free from what? We're the descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? That's certainly what I ask. I mean, don't we already live as free human beings? Don't we call this thing that we have free will? Thanks to the sacrifice of many here and many who have gone before us, don't we have the luxury of living in a free country? How could we be made any more freer than we already are? That seems to be the question that we continually wrestle with, doesn't it? What does this good news mean for us? Why is it important? Why does it matter? How are we free? Well, maybe we should start with the question of how are we not free? And maybe the first place we should look is to what Jesus said when he answered the Jews who were questioning him. And we hear him say, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. So if you commit a sin, then you're not free. And how many of us have ever committed a sin? Right. So I guess we're not totally free. I mean, we we do our best, usually. We try to live our lives in ways that avoid sin, and yet we're still human. We don't get it right all the time. We echo those words of the Apostle Paul when he says to the Romans that, I don't understand my actions, for I do not what I want, but I do that thing that I hate. I mean, we're caught in this trap of sin, which is why, fortunately for us all, that God sent Jesus to save us from that sin, to free us from that sin so that we can live as freed human beings. Good news, right? I could end the sermon here. Amen. Some of you are agreeing, maybe. (laughs) Maybe too much. But there's got to be more. I mean, there's always more. Not only are we freed from sin, we're freed from this world and freed from the ways of this world. I mean, the way I've heard it described and the way I like to describe it is that because of what God has done, we are freed to be in this world, but not of it. We get to be in the world, but not of the world. So obviously we're in the world. I mean, we're physically present here. We're, we're living and breathing If you don't believe it, you know, reach out and touch the pew in front of you or or grab your cheek or grab the cheek of someone next to you. I mean, we are, we're here. We're physically here and in the world. Yet we don't have to be of the world. We don't have to play by the world's rules. I mean, we have to abide by the laws, but we don't have to do what the world tells us we have to do or to live in the way that the world tells us we're supposed to live. But again, this isn't news to us. This is what we talk about all the time, right? The world tells us we've got to come out on top and be number one, but then Jesus says what? 
The first will be last and the last will be first. The world tells us the one who dies with the most wins. Yet we hear Jesus tell us to give away all of our stuff so that we can actually enter the kingdom of heaven. And then the world says to hate your enemies. But again, Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I mean, we get the gist. We've heard these stories of of these reversals about how Jesus wasn't really a huge fan of everything that was happening around him. And so he dedicated his ministry to upset that balance of power. It was to show this other way of living. It was to show a kingdom way of living. A way of living where we are freed from the things of this world that keep us bound. And when we begin to realize those ways by which we are bound, we can then say that the freedom that comes through Jesus is good news for us indeed. The truth has made us free. So now that we know what we're free from, the question becomes, what are we free for? What does this good news give us the freedom to do? And on a Reformation Day, where do we even begin? You know, the truth gives us so much. The truth gives us the freedom to love, to love God and love one another. We get to love our family, we get to love our friends, and we even get to love those who annoy the snot out of us. We can love our enemies and tell them that they don't have any power over us. And in the midst of war and terror and power struggles around this world, we can love the world and show everyone that peace can and will prevail. This truth gives us the freedom to believe. Believe in a God who creates Believe in a Jesus who redeems. Believe in a spirit who fills us with holiness. We can believe in God's word and we can believe that it is still living and breathing and speaking the truth that we so desperately need to hear. The truth tells, gives us the freedom to forgive. We are freed from the weight of evil, from the power of hopelessness and from the pain of suffering. We're given the ability and the freedom to tell another person that their actions cannot and will not keep us from living a full and whole life. This truth gives us the freedom to worship, to gather as the church and experience God's love and grace in tangible ways and deep within our beings. We gather to baptize, and to remember all of our baptisms, cleansing ourselves from the filth of this world and making promises on how we are one to live. We gather to eat and drink, to be filled, filled and fed, joined with the whole communion of saints so that we can hear for ourselves that these gifts of God's love and grace are for you and for me. We gather to sing and pray, offer and receive hope and yearn, and not just in the ways that are preferable or comfortable to us individually, but in ways that stretch us and speak to everyone in different ways. This truth gives us the freedom to share, to share the love of God with one another, to share the good news or, the, or sometimes the challenging news of the gospel through Jesus Christ to share our resources and our blessings, and to share hope. I mean, we've all learned from a young age that it's good to share. And among many other things, this truth gives us the freedom to live. No longer do we have to fear death because it's been defeated. No longer do we have to fear this world because we know there's a better way. No longer do we have to fear anything. We hear Jesus say over and over and over again, do not fear, for I am with you. We are freed to live in unity and live abundantly. The truth will make you free. So let us love and believe and forgive and worship and share, and live, and all these other things we are free to do because, why not? 
We have the freedom to do just that because the truth has made us free. Thanks be to God. Amen.